It's been a while the Autobots have appeared on the silver screen. Finally, they are returning to the big screen in their upcoming Transformers movie, The Rise of the Beasts. This inspired me in making a PCB badge to complement my enthusiasm and love towards the Autobots. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to design this Transformers PCB badge and how to solder the components to it. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can also order advanced PCBs, aluminium PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need to the greatest extent. For this tutorial you need 1555 timer IC, 147 kilo ohm resistor, 1220 ohm resistor, 1 BC548 NPN transistor, 133 microfarad capacitor and few blue LEDs. In my last tutorial I created a 555 LED fader module and explained how the circuit works. In this tutorial I'm going to use the same LED fader circuit to create a fading effect for the eyes of the badge. So before going ahead let's do a quick recap and find out how the LED fader circuit works with the help of an animation. The heart of this circuit is the 555 timer IC. Pin number 1 of the IC is connected to ground. By connecting pin number 2 and 6 of the 555 timer IC we put the IC in A stable mode. In A stable mode the 555 timer IC acts as an oscillator re-triggering itself generating square waves from output pin pin number 3. Three other components connect to this junction. First one is the 33 microfarad capacitor. The positive pin of the capacitor connects to this junction and the negative pin is grounded. Second one is the 47 kilo ohm resistor. One of its legs connects to this junction and the other leg is connected to the output pin pin number 3 of the IC. Third one is the base of the BC548 NPN transistor. The collector of the transistor along with pin number 8 and 4 of the IC connects to the positive terminal of the battery. The LED along with its current limiting resistor is connected to the emitter of the transistor. That's it. As simple as that. When pin number 2 of the IC detects voltage less than one third of the supply voltage, it turns on the output on pin number 3. And when pin number 6 detects voltage more than two third of the supply voltage, it turns off the output. This is how the trigger pin pin number 2 and the threshold pin pin number 6 of the 555 timer IC senses voltage and controls the output at pin number 3. The capacitor attached to the circuit will be in discharge state immediately after firing up the circuit. So the voltage at pin number 2 will be 0 volts which is less than one third of the supply voltage. This will turn on the output on pin number 3. Since pin number 3 is looped back to pin number 2, it will start charging the capacitor via the 47 kilo ohm resistor. At the same time, the base current of the transistor will also increase causing the LED to slowly fade in. Once the voltage across the capacitor crosses two-third of the supply voltage, pin number 6 turns off the output. This causes the capacitor to slowly discharge, causing the base current to fall and hence the LED starts fading out. Once the voltage across the capacitor falls below one-third of the supply voltage, pin number 2 turns on the output and the above cycle continues. You can hook up a multimeter to the circuit to measure the charging and discharging of the capacitor. To start the designing process, I need a transparent PNG image of the Transformers logo. So I went online and did an image search and downloaded a black and white image of the Transformers logo. Now using the paint.net application, I opened up the PNG file. The image on screen will be used for creating the border outline of the badge and also for creating the face on top of the top silk layer. To generate the border outline, I need a DXF file. Looking at the image, we can see that the image is split into multiple parts. If I load this to generate a DXF file, it will generate multiple pieces of the PCB and obviously that's not what I'm after. So I joined all the small pieces into a single image. Then I uploaded the image to convertio.co to generate a DXF file. 
This website allows 10 free conversions in a day unless you have a paid account with them. Now let's go ahead and add the new PCB to our project and remove the default border outlines. Then import the DXF file via file, import DXF menu. Make sure you have the border outline selected under layers when you import the DXF file. Now let's import the image that will go on the top silk layer. Select top silk layer and then import the image and move it inside the board outlines. Before going ahead, let's have a look at how the board looks like in 3D. As we can see, the eyes and all other holes still have the blue PCB bits inside. So let's go ahead and remove them from our design. To do so, select the multi-layer from the layers and object panel. Then select the solid region from the PCB tools panel and start drawing the region you want to exclude from your PCB. That's it. As easy as that. Checking the PCB in 3D, we can see that the top bit has now a see-through hole in it. I repeated this step for all the other bits that I wanted to exclude from my PCB design. Once the PCB design was sorted, I added all the electronic components to the board. Since I don't want any holes on my PCB, my choice was to either add SMD components to the board or to design the board in a way that I can solder THT components on it. I chose the second option and added all THT components. However, without their holes. Instead of the holes, I added some rectangles and circles from the PCB tools panel to the bottom layer and then exposed the copper. To finalize the design, I connected all the exposed pads as per the circuit diagram. That's it, all done. So this is how the final design looks like. So this is what came in the mailbag. Have a look at the quality. It is absolutely mind blowing. At the back of the board are all the exposed copper parts for soldering the electronic components. As mentioned earlier, I could have designed the board with SMD components. However, I wanted to design something that someone with zero SMD soldering knowledge can also do. All right, now let's go ahead and solder the components to the board. Let's first solder the 555 timer IC to the board. Then let's solder the two resistors to the board. Next, let's solder the 33 microfarad capacitor followed by the NPN transistor to the board. To conclude the setup, Let's solder the two LEDs to the board. You can power this circuit by providing voltage between 5 to 15 volts. So this is how the final setup looks like. You can insert the bottom bit of the badge to a wooden plank and put this on your desk to give your desk a flashy look. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.